Welcome back. You're tuned into CNBC TV 18 Prime on Big C. Joining us now on the show is Jatin Singh. He's founder and chairman at SkyMet Weather Services. Jatin, hi. Thank you so much for joining in. And, uh, well, the last 24 hours, a lot of conversation has been about artificial rain. I mean, we keep hearing about that, but that does seem like a very far away thing, perhaps happening in Dubai or at some place in China, etc. But now the, the conversation or the headlines are all coming in from India. First of all, how would you look at artificial rain? Would you say it serves its purpose? Also, the cost behind it, etc. Um, see, uh, India has been working with artificial rain for over 30 years, actually. The Indian Air Force did an experiment with sawdust way back in 1984. I, you know, and then the state of Maharashtra, the state of Andhra, the state of Karnataka, between 2003 and 2015, there were multiple droughts in India when we used to have uh, statistics of droughts until IMD cancelled out droughts completely as a concept in India. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's a separate conversation. But whenever we used to have droughts, both all these three states used to run uh, comprehensive cloud seeding programs using one or two Doppler weather radars and two pressurized aircraft. The whole idea was that you could basically find a thunder cloud and make it rain efficiently. See, cloud seeding has been there conceptually since 1896. And various countries have had various levels of uh, pilots and limited amount of success, starting from the United States. Then you've had uh, India uh, did it way back in the 1980s. Uh, then you've had uh, South Africa that has done it. You have Australia that has done it. Um, and uh, there have been studies. There's a Weather Modifiers Association also. Uh, but the fact is that it is still debatable. In the sense, the science actually works. The whole idea is that you take silver iodide or you take potassium iodide and you basically fire these flares into the base of the cloud, and it makes, and it has a nuclei, and, and it's hygroscopic. In fact, the fact is that it, it attracts uh, moisture, and then makes a cloud rain. Now, uh, in theory, it works. Uh, nobody will tell you it does not work. Uh, Dubai has been doing it with drones. Uh, there is uh, using electric charges and even laser. Uh, and I know that in 1970s, Yugoslavia used to actually fire rockets into uh, in, uh, yeah, into uh, in, into clouds. But um, uh, but uh, in terms of scale, it is hard to say if it actually works or not. Mm. Uh, Jatin, I've been reading reports on how uh, Delhi is doing it because of because to bring down pollution, really, and it might be at a cost of 3.2 crores. I mean, that is what it is projected at. How would you read into this cost itself for one-time project? I, I, what is the source of that data, 3.2 crores? Who is saying 3.2 crores? What is the line items? I mean, who's throwing that number? It, it is being reported, Jatin. W would you find it by higher, whom? lower? You are a reporter. I am a reporter. By whom? <laughs> I what is the source being it says it's sources. Like, hmm. uh, so I, 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 it can, I don't know. I mean, 3.2 crores is a, if I don't know who's saying it, on behalf of whom, was there a tender that was done? Well, how was the price discovery done? Is this some kind of governmental fiat uh, fund that has been given to, uh, to the Delhi government? Is, is this only the central government part of it? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> so, hmm. you know, hard to say. Hmm. Majatin, what would you say would be the cost to it and what all really it complies within a cost? I mean, I do understand, as you said, there's chemical to it, there's a plane perhaps to it, and what all goes into it? Uh, it's an expensive exercise. Uh, it, it all depends. I mean, you know, pilots, airport charges, aircraft charges, fuel, spares, uh, custom duties on flares that are not easily available. There are very uh, uh, limited vendors of that from across the world. Uh, you need a Doppler weather radar, if, if one or not two. You need operators for it. You need a team of meteorologists. Uh, and you obviously need a set of pilots, not just two, because you would need to keep on switching and have some kind of redundancy. Generally, the uh, if I remember, and, and, and this is not, I don't know if this can be benchmarked, but the tender uh, prices for Maharashtra and Karnataka way back 10, 15 years ago used to be in the ranges of 20, 30 crores per season. Uh, so I... I mean, I don't know. And the other thing is that how are the costs being absorbed? You, you, are, you do understand this cloud training program is done, done by IIT Kanpur, uh, IITM and IMD and the Delhi government together. And IIT Kanpur has its own aircraft and IIT Kanpur also has its own runway, has, mm. has its own aviation wings. So it, it might be cheaper for them. I do not know. Mm. Jatin, also come in on the success rate of this. I mean, I do understand a lot of countries have been doing it. You've told us that India has perhaps done it for the last 30 years when we started... How, is there any strike rate or success rate to this? 
in india is a country in which you can create an academic paper to prove anything mm-hmm. okay so if you you will find papers that it has worked in andhra like or it has worked in karnataka and somebody put rain gauges but the fact is that if you look at this deep scientific paper you will f- you will find that there is no you know there is no conclusion on this uh that does it maybe it works even beijing tried that in 2008 but it was not really repeated dubai seems to do it repeatedly maybe it is working there one will have to see the data but a lot of times cloud seeding both i remember when you were looking at droughts uh in india or now is done for optics because uh if for example this cloud seeding that was carried out yesterday in burari at 3 pm there is no rain gauge data pre post facto i would like to imd to publish that data that because there were no clouds and I, and i and I, if they're making rain out of thin air then that would be an achievement in itself uh the cloud uh basic autochromous cumulus clouds are not uh do not give rain automatically and they are they are not really rain bearing winds but you can juice out a little bit of rain out of uh, of the ambient moisture i'm not saying I, i'm not saying it's not out of the ordinary but one would like to see the data uh, i don't think there are rain gauges in burari but uh, where is the rain gauge data and the time that the uh, study was done the time that the rain was recorded and also if the rain was recorded in the area where you actually did this was there any kind of dip in aqi which can be at least uh, uh from a time frame perspective be correlated with the flight of the uh, uh, uh of the uh, uh, of the cloud seeding mission mm well all of that is still awaited and you make very very valid points there jatin but also when various countries do undertake this one of course is to check the science behind it and then it is also about drought relief and agriculture improving water resource management lessening air pollution forest fires etc i mean i'm assuming there would be some data available if not in india then in various parts of the world how much have we been actually able to manage all of this uh th- there's a lot of data see it probably works in the scale that you wanted to work okay in specific circumstances where you have a thunder cloud where you are able to juice it out where pre post factor because it is also something that is used for hail suppression mm. uh, it is it is also used for suppression of forest fires in australia it was used for for, a, for actually to create more uh, water for a hydropower project this was i read this about 25 years ago so mm. it's not that it does not work but the context in which it actually works and you have to do it over a long period of time 3 4 5 years and maybe it works you know only in a certain season on a certain kind of cloud at a certain scale uh, it is not like you know you switch and it is going to work and and, and in in north india in the history of this country this is probably the first time this has been done most of the time the cloud seeding that was done was done during monsoon now monsoon you also you already have moisture in the air you have thunder clouds and this is different you 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 are in uh, you are in uh, winter in north india you have a lot of fog you have a lot of dust and you don't really have any rain bearing system at least when it was done they're saying on the 27th there's a wd that is going to come but still those would i would imagine there would be cirrus or autocumulus clouds high clouds which are not really rain bearing so one will have to do it again and again and see if it works mm. well while there of course there's a science and it has been done in years but you're saying that it all has to come together whether it is about uh, clouds and uh, uh, you know the overall uh, depressions as well it is the only way that you can actually cloud seed is what you're telling us i'm saying it's going to take time um, we should not be you know it was it successful you cannot write it off because it did not work you cannot say it was successful it was done for the first time exercises like this need 4 5 years to come to a conclusion if it works or not they are not uh, they are not rambards mm. okay cloud seeding is, is do not expect see the, the problem is that the story that is being told is this like star wars you know we came we came we saw we conquered no you went you collected data and then we will see <laughs> i get your point that then also how would you relate to the climate climate change because the kind of monsoons that india has seen this time around and the expectation that you could be looking at harsher cold or winters going forward uh, you know climate change as a conversation was uh, has been done and a lot of that in the last couple of years but the last one year has been about more about economics and geopolitics etc and climate change perhaps has taken a back seat how are you reading into what we faced in 2025 when it comes to climate change i think uh, indians have an amnesia with monsoon and uh, climate change whenever it rains everybody forgets about it and whenever there's a drought or something that uh, start calling me uh, <laughs> you know i've seen this over a period of time uh there is a, there is manisha another serious problem the problem is that our rain numbers are being revised downwards and every year seems to be a good monsoon because your average is coming down 
and I'm going to write a paper on it. Uh, you, what used to be, you know, what used to be numbers that were revised once in 10 years are being revised in three years. And obviously, your monsoon is looking good every year. So, plus, you've also had good rain. I mean, my, my problem is if this turns and the year you have a drought, uh, you might actually have a drought and it might turn into normal. So, the problem is how rainfall statistics are being kept and averaged is, I think, problematic. They, it used to be stable, uh, but now it seems to, you know, being moderated more often than it should be. Uh, in terms of climate change, uh, you know, we've seen this over the last uh, 20, 25 years that uh, your average rainfall has actually gone down. The number of rainy days, uh, uh, your average rainfall has gone down. The number of rainy day, uh, the average rainfall has gone down by minus 5%, but your number of rainy days has uh, come down significantly. Your uh, your winter has got squeezed. Your 15 December to 15 January uh, is your peak time. And uh, your, your generally average temperatures are are now uh, higher. Uh, effectively, your seasons have also, you don't have an autumn, you don't have a spring, you basically have a winter, summer, and air pollution. But is that climate change as such, mm -hmm. or is that anthropogenic, uh, limited uh, into a limited area is still, uh, you know, quite uh, debatable. Point taken, Jatin Singh, as always, what a pleasure speaking to you. And thank you for all those details, really, something that India has been talking about. But clearly, a lot of research, a lot of paperwork and a lot of uh, uh, work on ground perhaps needs to be done before we can make some uh, strong uh, conclusions out of this at this point in time. But thank you, as always, for your time. And with that, that's all the time that we have on this edition of Big C. Thank you for watching.